Guys. So we're making arm chow. I don't know if anyone's going to be here. I'm kind of spontaneous with the lives, you know. I don't really announce them. But I just want to show you how this uh, machine works. And by the way, when I go live, if you want to support my channel and my wormery, there are super chats and super thanks and all these buttons that you can press. And uh, every little bit helps. So let me see. I guess it won't let me do it like that. Maybe if I could get you on a tripod here. Oh, wrong button. Okay. So it is Saturday and it's we're live here. And I don't know if anyone's watching. Um if you are, thank you. I'm kind of spontaneous with the live button, like I don't plan these things, they just happen. But I just filmed um, my ingredients and everything getting ready to make worm chow but then um, after I filmed it and I started making some I'm like let me press the like button and just see what happens you know I don't know why I look so red I think it's the Sun I think it's the camera I'm not sure <laughs> but I'm, tr I'm fine trust me I'm fine you like my shirt it's Bigfoot of course you know so here I have my worm chow it's very dusty it's a very dirty, dirty job. I'll bring you in closer so you can see it. So my ingredients are, this is beet, beet pulp and oats and corn. And that's food that the horses eat. Oh, sweet feed is in here too. So with this machine, it's a wonderful machine. It's an incredible machine. But you have to feed the hopper, which is the hole up here, just a little bit at a time. You can like overload this or it's gonna get stuck. And it did get stuck on me at one point. I had to stop it and just either open this and clean it out or wait for it. So I'm not gonna see any questions that you guys have because this thing made me turn my phone a certain way and I don't know if you have questions just leave them down below and later when i'm done with all this tonight i'll look at it and then i'll answer any questions you have but let me um let's just start this worm farming is a very messy career and when i pour this in i usually walk away because the dust is unbelievable and i did this do i did do this the first time inside my house and it was in my wormery. Oh my gosh, here the bees again. And the cloud in there was horrible. I had to clean everything. It was, yeah, it was a hot mess. So it's going to be loud. So if you don't like loud noises, I would turn down the volume if I were you. <laughs> here we go.
what I check is the consistency to see if I like it. Sometimes it's too thin. Sometimes it's too coarse. But if you could look at it. So what I do with this thing is thicker is this way and thinner is that way. So when I want my word chow, when I want it more thin, I turn this. Plus, what I also find about this machine is that as it vibrates, it loosens this and then it becomes thicker. So, but you know, I've never made my worm, sh my worm chow. I don't know why I'm tongue tied today. I don't know. <laughs> I've never made my worm chow like a powder, kind of like this on the edge. I've never done it like that. I don't know why it just, I don't know. My worms like it like this. They eat it just fine. The only thing is with the oats, see the little oats? Sometimes they sprout in your bin. So when that happens, what I do is I just pick up the little trees that pop up and I throw them right back in the bin. And you know, the worms will, will just, they'll just continue to eat it. And to me, it's like a bonus because it's like extra worm food and it's green food because it's like a little plant that grows. So when I make worm chow, guys, this is like an entire process of a day. It is very dirty. It's very uh, messy, but for the amount of worms that I'm gonna feed and for worms that I'm gonna sell, this is the best economical way for me to do this. And I know that some of you have been waiting for my worm chow. So once I'm done with this, either today, tonight, or tomorrow, <laughs> every time you see me do this, cause a bee flies by me. <laughs> um, I'll put it up for sale again. Now you don't have to buy my worm chow. You can make your own if you really want to. But it's up to you, you know. Some people like to buy all the ingredients and have them on hand. And if you have somewhere to store them, like in a giant container or something, you know, by all means. But um, I've never made this this quantity of worm chow in a machine other than this one. Like, you see, this is beet pulp. You see, I don't know if a blender will blend this. I, You know, I don't know. If any of you try it that are watching, just, you know, let me know down below. Cause I'm curious to know. Not that I'll ever do it like that because for me, I just whip things out. But to be honest with you, getting all the ingredients together, getting the, the bin on this rolly thing, getting this machine out, you know, plugging it in, trying to find where I'm gonna do this. I tried going in the sun earlier during the video. I had to stop and come back under here. Um, it takes longer to get all the prep than to actually make the worm chow. <laughs> Once I'm going, like I'm going, it's it's done. Like it's it goes fast too. I mean, look at that. Nutritious, very nutritious. Little secret ingredient. Secret ingredient of the day for those that are watching. Um, have you all ever heard of cricket feed? It's a powder that people feed to their I guess their pet crickets. I don't people raise crickets for I don't know, I guess to feed lizards and things. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, it's cricket feed. It is very high in protein though. So you have to be very careful. For this entire batch, I might add a tablespoon or two and just mix it in well. I noticed that the worms, they love it. And I noticed that um, they get kind of plump. So, but you don't have to add it. It's, it's expensive too, I think it is. For a jar this big, it's like, I don't know if it's like 13 or $16. But you know, for the amount that I use, it's like, it'll last me forever. So you people that feed crickets and you have to feed them that, boy, I don't know how you do it. You must buy that in huge quantities somewhere. So I wish I could turn my phone and see any questions, but for some reason it, it I don't know, it wouldn't let me today. So. Let me try anyway. Let me just play with it and see. So I am like very dusty. Nope, it says, no, you can't rotate your phone. Okay. All right, we'll behave. We won't rotate the phone because I'd, I'd want to 
I want to record this anyway. So I just finished um, filming out there in the sun and I had to move everything in. So basically, this machine, they have them on Amazon. I will link the shop down below if I remember. <laughs> and um, they're not cheap though, I will say that. It was, I don't know if it was 200 and something, 300 and something. I bought it like a year and a half, two years ago. And I bought it when I decided to put the worm chow for sale on my website. Um, because there was no way without this that I was going to be able to sell the amount that, that I sell. Because it's, it just wouldn't happen. Um, I've seen some people use the little smaller one with the round thing. Um, I've seen Gatano. He had that from Northeast Worms. And then he upgraded to this one. And Mimi's Worm Farm also upgraded to this one. So now we got to get Pachamama Worms. He has the little round one. Once you start selling your chow, maybe you could upgrade to this one. Um, it will make your life a lot easier. So I'm going to turn on the machine and I'm going to keep making chow. And you guys just chill there and you can watch me. And later on tonight, I'll, um, I'll check out all your questions. Because when I'm done... Oh, wait, I see someone. Yay! Someone said something so I could see something. Good morning. All right. I wasn't sure if he would even let me see. I don't go live often, so I'm not 100% sure what to do. I just kind of wing it. I just press the button and just see what happens. So I could see. Okay, so if you have any questions, I'll do my best to look at them. If not tonight. So we got to feed those babies. If you didn't already know, horn farming is one of the dirtiest careers ever. <laughs> when I'm done making chow, I am covered in dust, like from head to toe. I have found um, pieces of this in my hair. <laughs> so it's the second shower of the day later. But look at all this. 
Oh my gosh. That's amazing. I love it. So YouTube has the button down below that's a super thanks or super chat. If you feel like uh, supporting my channel, supporting my wormery, press that little button. I think you can donate anything from 99 cents and up. And, you know, every little bit helps, guys. I'm, I'm serious. Every little bit helps. Because when you start a business, um, it's not easy. It's not easy to start. There's a lot of expenses. So tomorrow or tonight, depends how tired I am, I'll put this up on my website. I mean, look at this. <laughs> so today's my Saturday off. I work on Saturdays, but not every Saturday. So the weather was perfect to do this because I've been waiting to, um, to make chow because I just, the weather just wasn't cooperating. So the worm colonies are coming back. I'm just resetting them. I have to go through each colony and I have to look and see how they're doing, how many worms I got left, the consistency. So I put them out of stock just to give me a chance to work with them a little bit. And they're coming back either this weekend or sometime during the week. Um, because I don't like to sell something, guys, unless I have it. I don't like to like take money and then people have to wait on me for, no, it's just not how I roll. So they are coming back and they're doing wonderful. Every, all the worms are. So do you, do you guys, oh, there was a question in my question and answer video, which I'm going to film the answers. Um, I think it was Pachamama Worms asked me if I had to choose um, a type of worm to work with alone. Um, my choice would be the red wiggler and the reason is is because red wigglers are very forgiving they're very tolerant they're very tolerant of people's mistakes and they just I don't know that they, they're the type of worm that just it has a had they have a lot of patience <laughs> now second would be the European night crawlers and they're similar to the red wiggler but I don't know. They're moody sometimes. When are they coming back by the pound? Um, well, I don't know yet. I'm gonna check tomorrow when I do my worm check on Sundays. It's my worm day to rotate breeder bins and things. And then I'm gonna look and see what my inventory is. Who is that commenting? Is that Damien? Hi, Damien. <laughs> Damien's name is Handy Geek and he's in Georgia. And he's been supporting my channel and my wormery, well, I think since last year. So I think, I think Damien has had every type of worm that I have, <laughs> except blue worms. I don't have blue worms. You know, people have asked me if I would breed only blue worms. And I don't know, because they need a lot of work, you know, they're just... They're very moody, and you got to be around them a lot. Hi! Hi, Damien! So, because they're unpredictable. And I would hate to, like, set them up and go out and come back to, like, a million worms everywhere because they just, they got ticked off at me. And and they do that. They have, they do that. I haven't been around blue worms in many years. Here's the bee again. And... But I know that there are people out there that love them. If I were to ever raise blue worms, it would only be a bin of only blue worms. I wouldn't have them mixed in with anything else. And um, they're definitely not a beginner worm, I'll tell you that. They're, they're a challenge. But a beginner worm is the red wiggler. Because they're, um, I don't know, they're just a sweet little guys. Like I've done things to them accidentally learning um, I've killed them and they haven't like run out of the bin. They haven't done anything like that. And you know, I just love them. That's why everyone loves them. Plus, not only that, their temperament, it's their composting ability is incredible. These worms will devour things and they'll do it fast. Once they get established, oh my gosh. So the starter colony. A starter colony is when I go in my bin and I just take a fistful and it'll have worms in there, baby worms, cocoons. It'll have all the microbes and the life in there. I don't count out how many worms are cocoons because that's not the purpose of a starter colony. It's to get your stuff starting, you know. 
So when you get them from me, put your wort starter colony in the bin, moisten it down with water really well because it's gonna be mixed with peat moss when it ships. And cover it with damp newspaper or a really nice soaked box and just let them be for a little bit. Um, you can start, I usually send out a pack of worm chow in my bag. You can start surface feeding that the next day and only feed again when it's gone. And the worms, baby worms, whatever is in there will start eating that. But in time, the cocoons that travel will start hatching and each cocoon has two to six babies so you're gonna have a lot of worms in time but you know these are all of course under ideal conditions and you gotta like take care of your worms you can't um you can't neglect them guys i know you can't even though they're very resilient you know when i had covid the first time thank you it's bigfoot you know bigfoot i love bigfoot um when i had covid the first time i almost died and it was horrible i didn't see my worms for like two months because you know what, Joe was more focused on helping me get well than the worms. And you know, that's my husband for you, 28 years together and I'm his priority and he's my priority. So the worms did fine though. When I got to see them again, I finally had the strength to come back down because I couldn't come down the stairs. Um, they were still alive, but they were very thin, but they were alive, so. It was all good and that's because they were red wigglers i don't think any other worm would have sustained that um i just don't think and especially if they were african night crawlers you know african night crawlers are so cold sensitive that they would have died because this happened to me in the middle of winter so it was fun times fun times but you know i'm just grateful i'm here so <laughs> that's why i'm always like so cheerful and happy and um this really is my personality i swear i don't fake it <laughs> now i'm like every other person i have my moments when i get upset i do but i walk away and i take deep breaths or i go on a walk or i play with my worms because that's what makes me feel better <laughs> damien damien has got how many pounds of rabbit poop did you get? Like 125 pounds? That's incredible. And you have it in a pile? I see you've been wetting it down. Oh my gosh. Aw, oh, thank you. Yay, I got a super chat or super thanks. I don't think I've ever gotten one. Thank you. I mean, every little bit counts. You know, yesterday, um, I was filming and I went to Tractor Supply and I got my stuff. Aw, thank you. Um, all my worm chow ingredients cost me $88. Yeah. Which is not bad. It's not bad because I got things in 40 pound bags and 50 pound bags. But, you know, still it was $88. You know? <laughs> you was way off by the pound how many ah was that a bee i'm not afraid of bees but every summer i am not kidding i get stung about 30 times i don't know if it's my perfume or my you know my wrinkle cream because yeah i put wrinkle cream on i use retinol i use hydropolic acid and i do all that stuff because i like to look <laughs> but i think the bees come after me so how many pounds was was your rabbit poop was it more than 125 oh my gosh you know i wish i had that amount of rabbit poop honest to god i do because rabbit poop to your worms is valuable guys but but please any rabbit poop you get make sure that the person who has the rabbit didn't give them a dewormer or something like that because it'll take out your worms it really will oh my gosh that's a big one it, it'll hurt your worm it'll kill them basically it's a dewormer because you know a thousand pounds you got no oh thank you <laughs> someone said the bees come after because i'm a sweet person thank you i try you know i try to be my best and i told you about my dad and this his story 
you know, my dad was always happy-go-lucky growing up, and I had an, an amazing childhood. I really did. And I asked my dad one day, you know, why are why don't you ever, like, get upset or get mad when something happens? He's like, when you have seen the worst in life, what's a leaky sink? He goes, ah, that's nothing. Ah, the battery in the car broke. Ah, nothing. We'll just get a new one. And, you know, he's right. He's right. So... You didn't get a thousand pounds of rabbit poop. No, you didn't. That's got to be a lie. Where's Vanessa? I know your wife is around there. Where is she? <laughs> rabbit poop, though. Make sure there's no dewormer. And make sure before you feed it to your worms, you rinse it. You rinse it because rabbits pee. And that urine, not good. It's very, well, like urine. It's kind of ammonia-like. And the worms just do better if you rinse it. So what I do is um, I just got a shipment of rabbit poop in from eBay. I know I buy from this kid on eBay who has rabbit poop. Um, he's banking on me, I'm telling you. But it's the only way I could get rabbit poop because honestly, I would love a rabbit, but I don't have time to take care of a rabbit and I'm not going to have one to neglect it. So maybe one day I'll get one and he'll live in my worm area and he'll be our mascot. But until I feel that I can have one properly, I won't. But you need to rinse that urine. So I put my rabbit poop in a bucket. I fill it with water and I rinse it really well. And then I drain it and I add it to my worm bin. Um, and they love it. Like I'll put it on the surface sometimes and I'll put like damp newspaper on top and they'll come up and eat it. Or I've also mixed it in and I noticed that they like it too. And you know what else too that I find strange? When I mix it, in or I soak it in water before there's no odor like like a barn or odor you know that barn odor no I don't smell anything so who knows maybe it's just my nose getting used to it but I don't know ah oh my gosh Vanessa said she went with you on an hour drive to get rabbit poop god bless her she needs to make an appearance you know that right we need to see her Joe is going to make an appearance soon. He's been on my videos before, but Joe's more like behind the scene kind of guy. He um, He's actually the one that builds things for me. And he screwed like this thing onto my table, my car. Let me show it to you. So as you can see, the machine is on this cart. And it's screwed on over here and here. And I put this thing on it. And he put this on here. It's like, um, I think it's like, I don't know, actually. It might be uh, some kind of kitchen thing. But it acts as a chute. So when the chow falls, it, it goes on there. So we got this shirt in the Smoky Mountains when we went last year. And, um... I love going to the Smoky Mountains. It's only about, I guess about six and a half hours from here. And we try to go at least once a year or once every two years. It's really beautiful out there. It's amazing. And the birds and the wildlife and the bears. And it's like, you know, I'm all into it. I love it. So, but I noticed lately that they have a big Bigfoot community and they do, I think it's once a year around the spring or summer. I think I'm gonna plan it for next summer. They do a Bigfoot conference. And I've heard that there's been a lot of Bigfoot sightings on the Appalachian Trail, which you can hop on there. So I think that that's why they're selling all the Bigfoot merch. So I'm all for it. I love it. I think in my, um, on my YouTube channel, my little store, I have some Bigfoot t-shirts uh, t and I think sweatshirts, which, um, I wish I could sell them cheaper, but I can't because when you do print on demand, like Printful or Printify, you know, they charge a certain price for the sweatshirt. And then, like, I make $5 on each one. So, yeah, I know it's a sad thing. But it's, at least if someone wants one, they can have it, you know. <laughs> I don't have one myself. <laughs> I should, though. I want to make t-shirts with my own logo and my own name on it so but then i'm thinking who's gonna wear a t-shirt that says the garden and worm lady nobody so maybe a, a picture of a worm or 
Bigfoot holding a worm. I like that. You know, something like that. I don't know. So I'm going to keep chowing over here and I'm running out of ingredients. So what I do is when I run out of ingredients here, I go inside and I get more. And then this process just keeps going because if I'm going to go through all this trouble of getting this out and setting this up and doing everything, it's going to be worth my time. So I try to make chow like once that way I don't have to make it for a while. And then I store it in there and I use it as I go and I sell it. Sometimes when I think I'm going to run out for my own worms, I take it off the market because I have to feed them in there. And um, then I put it back on. But you know what, guys? This beet, beet pulp, I honestly thought it was going to be red. I don't know why, but it's it's not. But, okay. I used to add powdered beets, which was like bright red, but... Um, it's expensive. A little container like this is like $9 or something. So I got beet pulp. It was like 50 pounds for like, I don't know if it was $9.99. So, but I need my machine to make it. The, you know, I've put things like this hole in my worm bin. I have, and I've done it on the surface and um, like that. And I wet it down and it does break down, but it, it takes a little bit of time but it does wet, break down. But when you put this on the surface and you wet it and you give it some time and you go like this to it, you can feel the heat come off of it because alfalfa, which this is alfalfa and you know, don't think I'm weird. I like, I like the way alfalfa smells. I don't know why. It just smells good. It smells like um, herbs. I don't know. Herbs that I cook with. So, but alfalfa will heat up your bin. So my worm chow that I make here is only for surface feeding. We don't mix this into the bedding. No, no, no. Because I put the worm chow in. If we were to mix this into the bedding, it would definitely heat up the whole bin. So we don't want to do that. And I made that mistake when I first started worm farming. I mixed stuff in. And, um, oh, you know what I mixed in? I mixed in some rice. Oh my gosh. My bin got so hot. It was a Worm Factory 360 that in between the floors, I had to put sticks to air it out. And every five to 10 minutes, I had to fluff it to get the heat out. This took hours. And luckily I caught it because if not, my worms would have ran or they would have died. So anyway, I'm gonna end this here. Thank you for my donation. I really appreciate it. That's so sweet of you. I'm so excited. I've never really had one before. <laughs> So I'm gonna keep chowing here. And then after I do that, I gotta shower and get all of this off of me. And I'll start editing the video that I made um, showing you my ingredients or anything. So do you guys have like any other questions before I leave? Is that a B? No. So if you have any questions, just type them in. I'll stay on here like a few more minutes and then I'm gonna keep going with this. And you'll see the other ingredients that I add to this, like azomite lime, um, azomite minerals, and things like that. The ingredients, yeah, you're going to see them in the video that I'm going to post before this one. And I'm going to show you everything. I'm, I even show you the bags. So you can clearly see the labels and things that I got. Well, I'm glad you found my live. You know, I should plan these things ahead of time to let more people know. But I'm kind of spontaneous like that. So... All of you that are watching me, you know, you need to go live too. Just press that button and just see what happens like I do. And then you just take it from there. So enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, press that subscribe button. And find my other channel. I don't know why I'm not at a 1,000 over there yet. I got 4,000 people watching me <laughs> over there. The composting worm lady. I keep looking because I see bees fly by and I don't want them landing on me. My other channel is The Composting Worm Lady, and that's where I show you my worms, but I show you my towers and my containers and I, my pets, and I do that, you know, inside my house. So hopefully I'll reach 1,000 over there too so that YouTube will monetize me, and then all of that will go towards my wormery. So guys, I'll see you next time, and take care.